I think it's. Uh, I think the Congress is vital uh, at this time because, uh, although they are the major growth areas in Australia, policy towards our cities and particularly the outer suburbs of our cities and the areas on the edge is completely unclear. And I think it's a really important moment for leading thinkers and practitioners about growth areas and cities like Penrith to come together to carve out a kind of here's why these areas matter and here's what national policymakers ought to do. So it's the place to be, I think, uh, in terms of city policy, and I think it'll set the agenda for the next couple of years. Yeah, I mean, I think on the on the on the good side, you know, Australian cities are being uh, uh, rediscovered, I think, now as the sources of national wealth. After ten years of just uh, policy being very focused on the resources sector, we're now going to see policy focus much more on our cities, because with the with the knowledge economy being focused very much in cities, cities are even more important in Australia going forward. So that's the good side. I think the challenging side is that some of the fastest growing parts of our cities are not in the CBD centres, like in Sydney CBD, but actually further out in the outer suburbs, which are growing huge, you know, very quickly. I think the challenge is about making sure that we've got um, public policy and public investment in place, and the thinking about what jobs, what services, what housing are we going to create for some of these places. So I think the biggest challenges are actually maybe towards the edge of our cities, fastest growing, but not necessarily at the moment the focus of public policy or public investment for infrastructure, for example. But the good news, we've got um, the, the Congress itself is going to focus on some of the critical thinking required to get national, federal and state government aligned behind the importance of these fast growing areas of our cities. Um, and I just think it's a great opportunity to refocus the debate. It's not just about the CBD centres like Sydney, it is about the role that places like Penrith will play in the Sydney of the future. It's interesting, uh, when people think about uh, jobs and cities, they tend to think about uh, things like how do we create a biomedical cluster or how do we create uh, various clusters. And it is true, we should always try and focus on um, how you can bring agglomerations of key sectors to your city. But one of the things I think we should think about going forward is by creating um, centres of urban amenity and attractions and cafes, bars, restaurants in our cities. You'd be surprised that international research tends to suggest that if we can create a kind of buzz at the centre of our city and they become um, the kind of regional centre for amenities, facilities, uh, services, like a regional capital like Penrith is, you can actually attract a lot of investment and I think increasingly important is the need to attract certain target demographies. The cities that attract, attract 25 to 34 year olds will be the successful ones and they'll be the innovation, innovators of the future. So I almost think that um, the thing to do is to develop a great urban centre and the economy will follow that. And I think that's the analysis of places like Penrith. Uh, and going forward, uh, we need a kind of talent attraction strategy for our cities and for the growth areas and not just an economic strategy. The, the economic strategy will follow the talent attraction strategy. I think the digital economy is a, is a great opportunity for the growth areas because it enables a kind of decentralisation in the economy that we've not really seen. Um, if you combine the kind of urban amenity of a, of a, of a city centre like Penrith can offer, cafes, bars, restaurants, with the digital infrastructure, then we begin to put together the kind of critical mass that will attract the talent, the key 25 to 34 year olds, the innovators, that really want that kind of urban vibe and can actually use the digital infrastructure wherever they are to create an economy. So I think it's a really good opportunity as long as we bring the kind of collaboration together, public-private, council working with SMEs together to create the kind of environment that attracts that talent. But I think it's a huge opportunity, like we've not seen before, to attract higher value jobs to our growth areas. Well, it's interesting. I think that always, always, always uh, in, a, in a dispersed, rather large place like Australia, you will always need road connectivity. And, uh, but I think increasingly we recognise the role of public transport, and not just in connecting us to, say, from Penrith to Sydney, but ensure that Penrith becomes the regional capital for its catchment by having great public transport sort of reaching out. So I think, I think there's a, a physical infrastructure still to be got in terms of uh, public transport infrastructure. Um, but I think it's also increasingly to make sure that you've got the virtual digital infrastructure in place. I think if you can't get, in 10 years' time, if you can't get 100 megabits per second as normal in a place, then people, graduates will not come to your city. So there are great challenges to ensure that you've got the digital connectivity in place and it isn't just in the, in the cities or the centres which are already out there in front. We've got to make sure that some of the growth areas have all the infrastructure that a kind of modern economy and the kind of talent that we're looking to attract 
is looking for in its place. So I think maybe digital infrastructure and public transport infrastructure. I think finally, co-working spaces strike me as really quite important going forward uh, in, in growth areas. And I think finally, as I say, the way in which we reimagine our libraries as digital um, information hubs, or some of them call them uh, ideas stores, I think that's quite critical. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm a big believer that uh, there's a great phrase come out of the international urban uh, thinking literature at the moment, cities collaborate to compete. So I think it's, it's to make sure that the public and private sector are working collaboratively for their city, and that the cities that do that best will succeed most. Um, and I think that's quite critical. So I think governments need to understand that they play a role in, as a procurer, as a partner, as an investor. Um, but the private sector, uh, we, need, we need also to incentivize the, the strategic-minded, quality private sector to come to our growth areas. And I think the quality of the government partnership on offer, the local government partnership on offer, is critical to ensuring you get the best private sector partners for your development. So I think, uh, I think it's a big challenge. I think um, cutting to the chase, we've got to talk with the Congress again. Given that we've got a relatively new federal government on our hands that hasn't got a very clear cities policy, it's really important that we meet, that we determine what the national agenda is for our growth areas at this conference and start advocating it. And I think the final thing is that it, the feds, I think, need to come around to understanding what role they can play in our cities. It isn't just state government. There should be alignment between federal, state and local government to really, really make our city, cities successful and I'm hoping that the Congress will be a focus for trying to create that kind of alignment between national, federal and local that is so important uh, for the success of our cities.